Cassius, Ashes of the Order. Chapter 17 Cassius stayed frozen in place. He knew something terrible had happened. I know, I know you're, you're here, here Cassius. Cassius. Your, apprentice Your apprentice told me everything. Told me everything. As, it As it stands, stands now, now, I have I her have and two of your comrades in my custody. In my custody. All of them set to be put to death. But I'm not above negotiation. Come forth to the Grand Hall, alone, and I will reveal the terms of your surrender. You will be here within the hour, or I will personally execute each of them, one by one. The choice is yours, Cassius. Cassius felt his heart sink into his stomach. He feared that this would happen. Zaturi, get the rebels back to the Arabella. No, Cassius, I'm not going to let you march to your death. If you die, he'll kill Bendel Kresh and Yara too. I have to go alone. If I show up with others, we all die. Stay with the Arabella. I'll figure something out. I promise you, they won't die. Not today. Not to him. Zaturi looked at Cassius with worry, but nodded, taking off her necklace and putting it around his neck. What's this for? Where I come from, it's a gesture of fortune. Go. Save them, Cassius. Cassius took Zaturi's metal hand in his and nodded before turning back towards the palace and heading inside. Step by step, he marched forward, no longer keeping to the shadows. They already knew he was here. Through the magnificent halls, he continued walking towards an uncertain future. He closed his eyes. He foresaw no easy way out of this mess. But Liara needed him. He wasn't going to let her die. Meanwhile, Liara was brought out to the Grand Hall, alongside Bendel and Kresh. Liara looked at Bendel, who was still reeling in pain. The terrible burn on his chest was raw and red, oozing with drops of blood. Bendel? I'll be all right, Liara. Kresh here has our back. Learn you, buddy. Kresh grunted in annoyance, restrained tenfold with heavy chains, locks, and braces. All three were brought forward to metal pillars in the center of the hall. Stormtroopers on either side. This doesn't look good. One by one, all three were chained to the pillars, facing the beautifully decorated hall. Out stepped the minister, speaking with two of his guards. You're so proud of yourself, aren't you? The minister paid no mind to Liara's jeers as he examined a data pad as casually as one would look over the pages of an old book. You think you've won? You're not going to get away with this. The minister looked up from his data pad. Get away with this? My dear girl, you read too many stories. This isn't some magical tale where your hero will ride in on a mighty steed to save you. This is reality. And the reality is that you and your friends are a band of treasonous liars and crooks. And you will be dealt with. But first, I will see to it that your master understands the gravity of his mistake. Minister, he will be here soon. I must recommend additional guards, in case things get heated. That will be quite unnecessary. A platoon of the Empire's finest is all that will be required. I have what the Jedi wants. He won't risk the lives of his companions in a suicidal attempt to save them. I hold all the cards here. The minister sat calmly upon a chair and waited. Meanwhile, Cassius slowly approached the large brass doors leading to the Grand Hall. He had no idea what he was walking into, only that it would be dangerous. Pushing the doors open, he stepped into the large hall and saw straight ahead the minister, sitting 
expecting him. A smile of superiority and smug satisfaction on his face. At least 50 stormtroopers surrounding the area, blasters at the ready. Behind the minister, Liara, Vendel, and Kresh restrained to metal pillars. Ah, the man of the hour. Welcome, Cassius, to my humble abode. Humble. Interesting choice of words. Cassius stepped closer and was accosted by two troopers who grabbed his lightsaber and brought it to the minister, who took it and smiled. Now then, shall we discuss the terms of your surrender, young Jedi? Cassius was led forward and stood before Tandon. Here is my offer. Let them go, and you can have me. Interesting proposal. However, I would like to make a counter-offer. You will tell me everything you know of your rebellion. The names of their leaders, their bases of operation, and the names of your comrades. In exchange, I will ensure that the deaths of your apprentice and her friends will be far less painful than yours. I don't suppose there's any way we all walk away from this. Perhaps we can work out something else. The minister stood and removed the sleek silver blaster pistol from his holster. I'm curious, Cassius. Let's say you could spare only one life today. Which of these three would you spare? Which one would you least want to see perish? Cassius glared at the minister as the two soldiers restrained him, and another kept the blaster pointed at his head. Tanbin walked over to Kresh, holding the blaster to his throat. Surely not the Athorian. The ugly brute has about as much worth as a glass of water on Kamino. Stop! Put the blaster down and we can discuss this. Tanbin raised an eyebrow and moved to Bendel, harshly poking the barrel of the blaster into his fresh burn as the young man winced in pain. The boy, then. What future could he have ahead of him, aside from drowning in a drink on some backwater planet? I said stop! One of the guards hit Cassius in the side of the head to shut him up as Tamden smiled and moved on to Liara, aiming his weapon directly at her heart. I know. Of course, you would save the girl. She's your apprentice, after all. Your legacy. The future of the Jedi. Or rather, she could have been. No! Stop! Please! Tanbin grinned, his beady eyes twinkling with malicious intent. So we have a winner. The girl it is. Tanbin pointed his blaster. Wait! No. Oh. I'll tell you everything I know. Please. Don't kill her. Not my Liara. Liara looked at Cassius as tears streamed down her face. Tambin smirked. How sweet. You should be thankful, Liara. Your master cares about you more than the entirety of the rebellion. Holstering his blaster, Tambin walked over. Start talking. Cassius looked at the minister, and over to Liara and the others. He was boxed in. No choice. No other options. Slowly, he opened his mouth to speak, when the guard on his left was suddenly struck dead by a blaster shot. What? The other two troopers were soon struck as Cassius turned and saw Zaturi, seated up in the rafters of the hall, her rifle in hand. Wasting no time, Cassius punched the minister in the face, knocking him to the floor before running to the table and grabbing his and Liara's lightsabers. Tambin quickly took cover from behind a table. Shoot them, you idiots! As the troopers aimed their weapons at Liara, Bendel, and Kresh, Cassius jumped in front of them, both sabers ignited, and deflected the incoming shots. From above, Zaturi began to pick off the stormtroopers one by one. Tanbin seethed in fury and activated the palace alarm before he fired at Zaturi from below, nearly striking her off her perch. Thinking quickly, he ducked behind cover and crawled from the room. Cassius was tiring quickly. He couldn't hold the attack off forever. Suddenly, 
he saw something. Between the legs of the troopers rolled several round, blinking objects. The troopers looked down in surprise as the devices exploded with a loud pop, spraying thick black oil all over them. Wait! Da, 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 da. From the window above, Cassius saw Pip standing tall and proud. Thought you might need a hand. The troopers fired off in random directions, the eyes of their helmets obscured by the oil. Dodging a few blasts, Cassius sent out a force push, knocking them back before running over to Liara and cutting her and the others free. Thanks. Cassius handed Liara her lightsaber as the troopers surrounded them. Vendel and Crash stayed close behind the two Jedi. Liara. You know what to do. Liara nodded and closed her eyes as she and Cassius floated their sabers out in front of them and began spinning them in a wide circle, creating a barrier around the four of them. The troopers opened fire, but every shot was deflected away as Master and Apprentice concentrated in perfect harmony. Saturi noticed the distraction and started picking off the troopers one by one until they had been defeated. Suddenly, however, she felt a searing, painful impact in her back, shot by Tambin from around a corner. Losing her footing, she fell from the rafters, plummeting to the ground below, crashing through a wooden table. Satori! Cassius and Liara called their weapons back to their hands as Kresh roared and Bendel gasped in terror. Dropping his saber, Cassius ran over to Zaturi, who was trembling in a painful heap, and held her in his arms. Zaturi! Zaturi! The Zabrak looked at Cassius as her breathing became labored, blood trickling down the side of her mouth. I'm sorry, Cassius. I lied. What do you mean? That necklace. Where I come from. It's a gesture of love. I've loved you for a very long time, Cassius. I'm sorry. I never told you. Cassius could feel Zaturi starting to fade. Zaturi, no, stay with me. Gently, Zaturi leaned forward and kissed him before her head fell back and her eyes glazed over. She was gone. Cassius stared at his fallen friend in despair. As he did, more troopers arrived through the halls of the palace, aiming their weapons and surrounding Liara and the others. As they did, Cassius heard a devilish chuckle and saw the minister approach, blaster in hand. Now that is precious. Cassius looked up at the minister, a fury in his eyes. Fear not, Cassius. You will be reunited with her. Very soon. Tanbin aimed his blaster at Cassius, when suddenly, a loud, guttural noise began to build through the Grand Hall. Looking over his shoulder, Cassius saw Kresh, shaking and rumbling, the sides of his head pulsating. Liar looked concerned. Bendel? Liar, cover your ears. Just as Liara covered her ears, Kresh let out a mighty roar that shattered the stained glass windows and shook the chandeliers. Everyone in the hall, the troopers, the minister, the Jedi, all fell to their knees, clutching their ears in pain. Kresh immediately ran over to one of the stunned soldiers, picking him up and throwing him with immense force into the wall. The other troopers tried to fire, but Kresh wouldn't have it, rampaging through the stormtroopers and smashing his massive fists into them. Standing up, Bendel grabbed a blaster from one of the fallen troopers and fired. Liara soon joined as Cassius and the minister stood. Tanbin tried to fire at Cassius, but the Jedi was faster, knocking the weapon from his hand and engaging him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As more troopers arrived, Liara gasped. There were more than she could handle alone. Just then, Cassius' saber flew from the ground and passed her ear into the waiting hand of Gaiadome, accompanied by the rebel prisoners and Tosa. Gaiadome! Igniting the blade, Gaiadome rushed forward to her side as Tosa led the prisoners forward, firing upon the Imperial troops. Pip soon joined as well, running over to downed troopers and hitting them in the helmets with his shock wrench. The Grand Hall was now filled with the sounds of carnage, blaster fire, lightsabers, and falling glass. Cassius and the minister continued to battle, each taking strikes and blows from the other. As they grappled, Tambin glared into the eyes of Cassius, 
but his gaze soon turned fearful as he turned and saw his soldiers being quickly overwhelmed. Dodging a punch from Cassius, Tanbin unsheathed the knife from his belt and slashed Cassius across his face. Stunned briefly, Cassius held his face as the minister ran into the palace. Cassius wouldn't let him go that easily and pursued him. With one final cut, Gaidom defeated the last of the reinforcements and looked around. Cassius! Liara breathed heavily, looking around for her master. Where is he? He must be after Tanbin. We have to be ready. More troopers could be arriving any moment. Liara, I think I found something. Running over to Liara, Pip held up a small black comlink. Gaidom took it. The Minister City comlink. His what? This is how he sends out his announcements to the citizens. I have an idea. <laughs>